So we've talked about the beauty of God's love, the beginning of time at the beginning of our conception. We've talked about the reality of evil and the forces, not just in the world around us, the powers and the principalities of Satan and all of his minions, but even that battle within each of us, realizing that we are wounded, uh, that yes, we reject the Father's love every time we fall into sin. You know, there's this great line from G.K. Chesterton, one of my favorite authors of all time, a famous British journalist from the early 1900s, and he was at the time writing a regular column uh, for the London Times, and they once asked him to simply write uh, a brief word about what's wrong with the world. That was the title, What's Wrong with the World? And of course, I think most of us could probably write a book or two or five about what's wrong with the world. Uh, But he chose two words. He said, I am. This is really how we begin uh, to see transformation in the world, by allowing ourselves to be transformed first, by realizing our woundedness, our brokenness, what it means to be fallen and to be a part of this wounded human nature. And so there's something incredibly humbling about that. I recently read Pope Francis' new book, The Name of God is Mercy. And in one section in there, he talks about this real spirit of uh, closeness that he feels to prisoners. So whenever he goes into a prison to do ministry, he finds himself scratching his head because he cannot believe that it's them on the other side of those bars and not him. I think there's something powerful about that. If not for the grace of God, there go I. I distinctly remember being in seventh grade. This was the first time in my life that I began to really fall into some habitual sins. I was at a sleepover with a bunch of my football buddies at the time. I grew up playing all kinds of sports. And every weekend, we were either off at a college football game or having a late night poker tournament at someone's house. And this particular night, uh, someone brought um, this duffel bag full of things that he had stolen from his dad's sock drawer. And you can imagine uh, just the, the, the slaughtering of my innocence that night as I was looking at pornography for the first time. Uh, you know what? Seventh grade is actually a pretty late exposure on average these days. That's what's so sad, is particularly our young people are being exposed uh, to so much evil and being uh, confronted with so much temptation at such a young age, unlike anything that even I experienced 10 years ago. Uh, But that began a very sincere struggle to be a man of purity and chastity for me that persisted through high school, early college, even continues up until now. It's it is as 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 so often we have heard the 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 struggle, the battle for holiness is over about five minutes after we die. You know, Uh, but one of the great moments where uh, I found uh, God's goodness, where He suddenly showed up. Uh, took place when I was 19, probably 20 years old, as a student at Vanderbilt University. Up until this point, I had been kind of waiting, not so much patiently, but with great expectation, waiting on the Lord to bring about a transformation in this area of my life. I was so done with gritting my teeth and clenching my fists in order to be a man of purity and chastity. And even though I had an incredible accountability group my freshman year at Vanderbilt, uh, even though by the time I was a sophomore, I was starting to go to Mass more frequently, not just on Sundays, but even beyond that, at the end of the day, I really uh, was exhausted trying to fight these sins myself. Uh, The parallel here in salvation history, uh, I think, is the Israelites as they're awaiting the coming of the Messiah. These thousands of years perhaps millions, but thousands at least, between the fall of mankind in the garden and the coming of Christ at Christmas. God is constantly trying to save his people, right? He sends the the law and Ten Commandments through Moses. He sends all these prophets to offer all these warnings. And ultimately, the only way that we can be saved is by God sending his Son. But up until that point, can you imagine the expectancy, the ache, the longing for that fulfillment? And I definitely think this particular area of my own life is a microcosm of that. I was longing for that transformation, desperately wanting my heart and my mind to be completely rewired and transformed, that I would no longer ever uh, be tempted or fall into temptation uh, in these areas of purity and chastity. So I just distinctly remember as a sophomore at Vanderbilt, 
in uh, that little holiday in mid-February that some call Singles Awareness Day, uh, also Valentine's Day. And this particular year, all of my friends had really cool dates, so they really had uh, incredible girlfriends, and I didn't. I didn't even have any plans that night. And I was feeling pretty pathetic, and frankly, there's all these different struggles happening in my life, and I'm just like not even sure what life is about at this moment. And I reach my hand into my pocket that afternoon as I'm waiting for a friend uh, outside their dorm, and I feel a rosary, not this one, but another one. And I realized that I had no idea how to pray it. But as I reach my hand into my pocket, I hear this voice, uh, not out of the clouds, but in the depths of my heart. And it says, Jimmy, if you ever want to fall in love with a woman on earth, you must first know and love your mother in heaven. And immediately I'm thinking, like, where did that come from? <laughs> where did that come from? Uh, I've never heard a voice quite like that before, but it was in the stillness of my heart. And a few weeks later, Lent began, and I decided that this was going to be the year that I was going to learn how to pray the rosary. And sure enough, after 40 days of, of carrying a cheat sheet in my back right pocket, learning how to pray which mysteries on which days, and even finally memorizing the Hail Holy Queen, I mean, that's a bit of a doozy the first time you, you attempt it. Uh, Easter rolls around, and I'm smitten. I'm in love. I'm in love with Jesus through Mary in a way that I never thought possible. And so there was this, this incredible, uh, terrible uh, period of, of longing and waiting. And then suddenly Christ showed up. Uh, because from that point forward, it's like these, these sins have never been habitual uh, again. Uh, they've never been the same level of struggle. God has had me on this journey of, of living virtue and specifically chastity with a great deal of, of peacefulness and hopefulness and trust in his mercy. And so it's like when you fall in love with true beauty, you just don't settle for the counterfeits anymore. And I think that's often uh, where we get a little bit tripped up, that we think we can somehow fight uh, temptation and fight the devil all on our own. But in fact, all we really can ever do is fall in love with God. Fall in love with the one who is the author of truth and beauty and goodness, who transforms the desires of our heart, uh, who makes us and conforms us uh, into his very heart and into his very being uh, so that uh, we can actually uh, stand before temptation um, and, and believe uh, that God has gone before us, uh, that his strength is what will, what will fight that battle within us. Uh, for his weakness is greater than our strength. His, his folly is greater than our wisdom, as St. Paul writes. So I just want to close with a passage from Psalm 37, verse 4 to 7. Find your delight in the Lord, who will give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust that God will act and make your integrity shine like the dawn. Be still before the Lord. Wait for God and patience. So perhaps it's some area of habitual sin in your life. Perhaps it's some area of uncertainty or confusion, maybe even an area of great suffering, and you are awaiting God's goodness, His presence, His providence. All we can sometimes do is sit in that cloud of unknowing and trust that God is going to come and save the day, that He is going to show up and bring about the very transformation, the very grace that we need. Sometimes when we're driving up that long, windy, dark, mountainous road, uh, if there's fog, we can't see a thing, much past the couple of feet in front of us. And I'm always tempted when I'm driving up a foggy mountain road to turn on my brights. But I have to realize that, in fact, that makes everything more difficult. That sometimes all God gives us is the next step. So maybe we can join with the Blessed Mother ask for her prayers to teach us what it means to wait on the Lord, to be patient and to trust that he will act.